So the next video in our series on MySQL is about how to create tables. Now we've looked at PHP MyAdmin and how you can use that to create tables, but we want to be able to do this from code, from PHP, from Node, from whatever the server-side languages that we're using. So we need to know what the SQL commands are. And very simply, this is the command, create table. Then you're going to specify which name you want to use for your table. So let's say I'm going to create a table called TV. I can do something like this, where I put a set of parentheses, and inside of here I list off all the columns and data types. And we're going to come back and we're going to do that one in a minute. But first of all, I wanted to show a slightly simpler one, which is if you want to copy what some other table already has, you can do this. You can say create table with the name and then use the keyword as. Then we can add a select statement to bring in another table and have the columns created for us. So in my shows table right here, we have initial year, number of seasons, show ID, show title. Let's say I'm going to bring in the title, ID, and the number of seasons, just those three columns. This new table is going to have those three columns. So I can say show ID. But since this is going to be a, ta a table called TV, I'm going to change that. I'm going to give it an alias, which is going to give me a column with that new name. And then show title as TV title. And then we'll bring in num seasons, and we'll just leave that name the same. Just like that. So I can run this. And we get an error. Show ID. Oh, of course. When you do a select statement, you need to add the from clause. <laughs> so there it is. So selecting these columns with those aliases from the table shows right here. And there we are. Now we've run this query. And if we look down here, here is our brand new table, TV, with the columns. TV ID, TV title, and num seasons. So the aliases that we created right here, it used those as the names for the columns. So we can jump over to that table and we can see that the data types are the exact same size as the ones that we had in the shows table. If you browse the data, even the data got brought over and placed inside of this table. Okay, so that was the jump up back up to the movies level. Now that one copied a table. So we said create table. We gave it a name, whatever the name's going to be as, and then we did our select statement. So that's the first way of doing it. Now, more commonly, you are probably going to be creating a new table all on its own. Now we're going to create this table here that I already have called people. I just had it in here so we can take a look at it first. And there's going to be a person ID. This is going to be our primary key. Last name, first name, has account is going to be a Boolean. Birth year is going to be a year. So we're going to create those five columns inside of here. Now, if I try to create a new one with the name people, problem is this already exists. So I can say if not exists. This is a perfectly valid thing that you can add to your query. When you're trying to create a table or alter a table or drop a table, you can check to see whether or not something exists. Now, this does exist, so now I'm not going to get an error, but what I will get is nothing happening because the column or the table already exists. So just for this example, I'm going to do this drop table people and drop table if exists. So now we're protecting ourselves in both places. We're going to delete the table if the table is already there. And then we're checking to make sure that it's not there. And then we're going to create it. So inside of here, the columns we want, we want to have a person ID column. We want to have a first name column a last name column, our birth year, and 
has account. So those are going to be the columns that we're going to use. Expand that. All right, now that's just the names. We still need to define what the data types are going to be. And we can do that right here, just, just before the commas. So person ID is going to be an int. First name, I'm going to make that a varchar. Let's just say 50. Same thing for the last name, varchar 50. Birth year is going to be a year field. Has account, tiny int one. So it's a Boolean. All right, that's going to give us our columns with the data types. The person ID, we want to make that our primary key. And I'm also going to say that this is going to be an unsigned integer. I only want positive numbers. I don't want any negative ID numbers. So int unsigned. I'm going to say not null. And it's also going to be auto increment. So I'm defining all of this in one single line. I'm saying it's a number that can only be positive. It can't be left null if somebody inserts something. And it's going to auto increment. And then down at the bottom here, I'm going to add one more thing. Primary key is going to be the person ID field. So I'm creating this as the primary key for the table. First name varchar. Well, good practice to say not null, just to make sure that somebody doesn't try to insert a record without first name or last name. And for has account, what we're going to do is instead of just saying not null, we're going to put in a default value. So if somebody doesn't enter this, the default will be zero. So we're saying that they do not have an account. All right, that will create our five columns, assign the data types to them, and the primary key is going to be defined as person ID. And there's a couple of other options that you can add afterwards. Well, there's actually a lot of options that you can add, but we're going to put in a couple. One of the ones that I recommend always putting in is the engine. So there's been a few different engines that uh, MySQL uses, and depending on which one you choose, there's some different options. Basically, in ODB, this is the one that you want if you want to do any sort of transactions. If you want to have something that's a little bit more efficient that has row level locking, now what that means is if the database is talking to a table and it's trying to update a single row inside that table, and then somebody else is trying to talk to the same table at the same time, well, if you've got row level locking, it means that only the one that's currently being updated will be stopping anything else from happening. So if you and somebody else are trying to update two completely different rows, both operations can basically happen simultaneously. It's not waiting for the first person to be completely finished with the database before you're allowed to make your change. There's another one, an old one called my ISAM, and this one had table level locking. So two people couldn't make changes to the same table at the same time. So we're going to use this one. And we can also do things like this. I can set a starting value for auto increment. This means the very first time that somebody enters something, the auto increment value is going to start at number 1000. This is a fairly common practice because when you're working on a development version of the site, there will be data going into the database that you'll say is just sort of practice data or test data. Then you can change the auto increment value to say anything that's above the number 1000 or 10,000 or 50,000 or 100,000, any number that is that or higher, that's real live data. Anything below this was just our test data. So if you ever need to remove that part or do a test, you can work on numbers that are below the 10,000 or 100,000 or whatever the number is that you want to choose. We can also add some other stuff in here. For example, collation, we can set that to, uh, let's say, UTF-8, general case insensitive, like that. Now this, what it's saying is, when you do a sort on a table, if you're dealing with different languages, so let's say German and English, you've got some German words, you've got some English words, and 
not all the characters that you have in German are in English. English doesn't have the two dots above the O's or the U's, the umlauts. Uh, it also doesn't have the double S character, the Schloss. Now, if you were trying to sort the data, you need to know, well, which character comes first? Or are different characters equivalent? Does it matter that the umlauts are there? And the collation is what determines the sorting order inside your data. Forward strings. Okay, so there's the basic syntax. We can run this once. I'm getting the confirmation because I have the drop table command at the very beginning. And there we are. So it ran. Oh, no. Okay, right here. Um, my collation and then the next line auto increment. I'm missing the equal sign there. Okay, so we got to put the equal sign inside of here. And oh, I'm also, this should be collate, not collation. All right, so we've got that, and let's run this again. Okay, there we go. So that ran. Sometimes just even a space can be off if you're missing a space or you're missing a comma. Something as small as that can set off your query with any kind of query that you're running. So we have the new table here. All the columns are in there. The indexes. And yes, it has the primary key index that we set as person ID. Okay, so that is the syntax for create table. That's that one. And I'll put the other one on here. Create table. And there it is. There's the other syntax. So creating the table, if it doesn't exist, call TV as, and then your select statement to bring whatever you want out of whatever other tables. Now, my example here, I did one single table. If you want, you can do a union or a join and connect data from different tables and bring it all together to create a new table that has that data. All right. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments down below. I will put a link to the reference for this uh, create table syntax uh, from the MySQL reference. I'll put that in the description as well as a link to the rest of the playlist. And as always, thanks for watching.